In the last video, we left off showing that pink view controller. That was it. This is the video where we're going to lay down the foundation for a navigation. But let me kind of explain how all this navigation works. Um, because like, right, we have a tab bar controller, as you see in the design, that tab bar controller is going to hold two navigation controllers, each one, you know, one for the search tab, one for the favorites tab. And in those navigation controllers, we're going to hold view controllers. So it's like containers holding containers, right? Like I use, I like to use the Russian doll analogy, right? You, you pick up one, you open up a Russian doll. There's another one in there. You open that up. There's another one in there. That's kind of how this navigation works. So what we're going to do is we're going to build it out in code. I'm going to describe it as we go. And at the end, once we build it in Xcode, I'm going to blow out all the views so you can see exactly like, you know, the tab bar controller holding the navigation controller, which is holding the view controllers, right? So hopefully this all makes sense if you're not familiar with like how these containers of containers like work. So the first thing we want to do, like I said, we want to get rid of this view controller here. I said, this is the generic view controller. We're going to get rid of it in its place. We're going to put a UI tab bar uh, tab bar controller. Uh, and again, we're going to come back in and change this. This is just a placeholder now. So when I delete this view controller, Xcode doesn't, uh, you know, yell at me. So in order to start building this foundation, we actually kind of have to start backwards, right? Cause like I said, this tab bar controller is going to hold our navigation controllers. The navigation controllers are going to hold the view controllers, right? And the view controllers I mean is like this initial search screen that you see here, right? You, in the navigation controller, you push on to the uh, the collection view of the followers, etc. So if I ran this right now, uh, nothing would show because the tab bar controller like doesn't have anything in it. So in order to build this, we kind of have to work backwards. I have to build the initial view controllers so I can build the navigation controllers, right? Because they go in there. So then now I can build the tab bar controller. This will all makes sense in a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do is create those, that search for view controller that you see here. That's what this is going to be. We're not going to build out that screen yet. And then the other view controller is going to be the favorites list view controller, again, that you see here. Again, we're not building out the screen. We're just getting the placeholder there. So let's start there. And then, like I said, we're going to build the navigation controller, then the tab bar controller and put it all together. Okay, so in your project uh, and get a followers file, do command N, that'll bring up a new uh, file. We're gonna do Cocoa Touch class, hit next. And uh, yes, you do want it to be a subclass of UI view controller. And we're gonna name this uh, search VC. And some people type out view controller. I just find that to be redundant and cumbersome. You know, I, I like less clutter. I just do VC, VC, name it whatever you like. Uh, so I'm gonna call that search VC, make sure it's a Swift language, hit next and save it to where you need to save it. Cool. And while we're here, we're going to get rid of the uh, the comments. And like I, like we did before with the test, we want to make sure we're showing the right view controller. So we're going to give it a, a color. So view dot system or sorry, view dot background color equals dot system pink. That'll give us that color. And then we'll change. We'll make like the, the favorites one blue so we can see it in the tab bar controller, blue and pink back and forth. Um, OK, so uh, now the same thing. Make sure you have the GitHub followers folder uh, selected. Command N, Cocoa Touch class. Now we're creating our favorites and it's called, I like to call it favorite list VC because it is a list of the favorites. So favorite list VC, uh, again, make sure it's the UI view controller, make sure it's in Swift, hit next, save it. Uh, same thing we just did, delete the comments for cleanliness and make this one blue. Uh, view dot background color equals dots dot system. And by the way, I don't want to hover over this. So, so this whole dark mode implementation that we're doing, we're going to be doing it as we go. It's not like we're not going to do anything. And then at the end, we're just going to convert everything to dark mode. Um, we're going to be building dark mode in as we go. So the reason I use system blue and not blue is because these system blues and system pink, those are colors that automatically adapt. It's like a slightly different shade of blue, whether it's dark mode or light mode to make sure it looks really good, right? This is like the default Apple stuff. And you know, Apple really has that attention to detail. So you're not getting the same blue in dark mode and light mode, the system will actually adapt it. So that's why we're using like the system colors. And I'm going to show you more about that in a little bit. So now that we have our view controllers created, right, our search VC and list VC now, and this is what we're going to put into our navigation controller, right? Because a navigation controller just can't show by itself. It, a navigation controller has to be holding an array of view controllers. Right now, our array is only going to hold one view controller, but uh, you know, that, that can change. So uh, back to our scene delegate here. Now let's create uh, the two navigation controllers, because like I said, the tab bar is going to have a search tab and a favorites tab in each one of those tabs is going to house uh, its own navigation controller. And then, like I said, those navigation controllers are going to house their array of view controllers. 
So to create that, and by the way, we're gonna refactor all this at the end. I'm gonna kind of write some spaghetti code to ex explain it, and then we're gonna refactor. It's gonna look nice and pretty and, and good code. So uh, let's do let search NC, short for nav controller, uh, equal UI navigation controller. We get the autocomplete, initialize it. We wanna initialize it with a root view controller. Remember I said a navigation controller has to have uh, something to show. So that root view controller, because it's a search NC, is going to be uh, an instance of uh, a search VC. And again, we're gonna refactor this now. This is kind of placeholder stuff. And let's do the same thing for the favorites list. So let uh, favor favorites NC equals UI navigation controller, again, with a root view controller, and this is going to be a favorites list VC. So, so same thing. So again, we're just creating the navigation controller that holds those. So now we wanna put these navigation controllers inside the UI tab bar controller. So again, I told you we, this is gonna be messy for a little bit. It'll, it'll all come together. So let's actually do this here. Let tab bar equal UI tab bar controller and that, and then we're gonna replace this and call this tab bar now that we created up here on line 23 because we wanna customize this a little bit. We wanna do tab bar dot, uh, nav, I'm sorry, dot view controllers uh, equals, and it's an array of view controllers. So make our array here real quick. And this is going to be search uh, NC and then also favorites, uh, favorite list NC, I'm sorry. Favorite, uh, yeah, favorites NC is what I called it. Man, too many similar names. Um, so there we go. So we have our search NC on line 20 and then favorites NC on line 21. Okay, so now we have the foundation. Like I said, our tab bar controller is holding the nav navigation controllers, which are holding the view controllers. So when we run this, we should see a pink and a blue screen as we tab back and forth. So let's run it and see what we got. So as you can see, we have our system pink. This is our search VC. Uh, it shows up first because that's what we put into the array first. You see it's a navigation controller because it's got the nav bar. And you see our tab bar at the bottom, but wait a minute, there's no like, there's no icons. Um, but wait, if I click, so the functionality is there. There are just no like icons or titles there to let me know what I'm clicking on. Um, fun little mystery game though. Like, ooh, how many tabs are there? Um, but let's go back and fix that. And this is part of the kind of like the refactoring as well. But our, our general foundation is working. Again, tab bar controller, holding navigation controllers, which are holding view controllers. So now that we need to do some customization on these objects um, to get the titles and the icons and all that stuff, now we're gonna start our refactor. So we know we're gonna have to kind of create our view controllers here. So I actually like to separate this out. We'll scroll up here uh, and do a function here. So uh, func create search navigation controller. And this is going to return a UI navigation controller here. So, and we're gonna return this navigation controller with the search VC in it. Oops, I forgot the old, the, uh, the old parentheses there. So let's go ahead and uh, let search VC equals uh, uh, initialize a brand new search view controller. And you, this is gonna replace what's up here, uh, up at the top, but we're doing it down here now. So in the view controllers, it's actually where you configure the tab bar, like title and icon. So search vc.title equals search. And, and this is also like the title that goes at the top uh, of the nav bar. And search vc.tab bar item. Again, now we're configuring the tab bar item at the bottom. And it's gonna be a UI tab bar uh, item, if you initialize that, you can see we have a couple options here. We're gonna use the system item. So down here, these last two, title, string, image, selected image. If you were creating your own custom tab bar with, again, with the custom uh, images, maybe you got some cool tab bar icons, this is where you would initialize that with. We're gonna use the system stuff because again, we're using a search icon and a favorites icon. And Apple has those by default, so that's what we're going to use. Uh, so dot system item, and if you hit the dot right here, you can see bookmarks, contacts, downloads, favorites. You know, this is all the, the most common uh, types of icons. So we're gonna use search. And the tag is going to be zero. So that's going to be the first one, right? It's zero index. It's gonna be the one uh, on the left. And then we want to return, right? Because we're returning this UI navigation controller here on line 33. So return, we'll initialize the UI navigation controller and again, with the root view controller, this time we're using the root view controller uh, number 34, or on line 34 here, just called search VC. Again, that we configured with a title and a tab bar item. So uh, fill this out with uh, search VC that we created right there. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the favorites navigation controller here. So uh, again, I like two spaces in between. You're gonna get some style stuff too throughout this video. Um, I like two spaces vertically in between my functions. Uh, on this huge screen where I gotta have my, my text very big for you, it may seem excessive, but in normal text size, uh, I like it, it's better. Um, so uh, func create, and we're gonna, this is gonna seem repetitive, but we're gonna talk about that. Uh, create favorites 
navigation controller. Again, this is going to return a UI navigation controller. Like I said, this is going to seem like very similar code, and I, I do this intentionally. Uh, so let uh, favorites uh, VC or list VC to be consistent uh, equals, and again, we're initializing a favorites list VC. We're going to configure it very similarly. Uh, favorites list VC dot title equals favorites and favorites uh, list VC dot again is the tab bar item equals UI tab bar item initialize that with the system item this time if you hit dot there's going to be a favorites pretty convenient and then this time the tag is going to be one because this is the one and if you had like four more of these it would go like zero one two three four um, and then again uh, return UI navigation controller root view controller uh, is favorites uh, list VC the local one uh, real quick let me actually do that real quick let me redo that because oftentimes you'll see like variable names very similar to the class name I don't know if anybody if people pick up on this but when you do the autocomplete and you fill in the view controller and you start typing favorites you can see one has an L next to it and one has a C next to it this L means it's the local variable the C means it's like the class and you can see it's, it's capitalized here um, whereas this one's lowercase so that's how I always know which is which. You can see like the local variable or the class one. Local meaning it's local in the scope. It's this one we created on line 43. So we want to use the local one. Just a little tidbit there. Maybe you didn't know that. So back to like these two functions are very similar, right? Except, you know, so you could write a function that took in like five parameters, right? We would need to know the type of view controller that got sent in. We would need to pass in the title. We would need to pass in the type of system item. We would need to pass in the tag. And when it comes to that, like if I have to create a function that takes five parameters, I would much rather just, you know, keep it simple and write another, write a very similar function. So I guess what I'm trying to say is this is where like the art of programming comes in. Like if you just blindly follow the don't repeat yourself rule or, or make everything crazy, you know, flexible and reusable, you can take that too far and your code can become more convoluted than it has to be. So again, there's no black and white, right, right or wrong answer. It's just, it, it's very nuanced and also probably very subjective and opinionated. And like some people may prefer passing in four or five parameters. I personally don't like that. I think it becomes more confusing. Okay, so we have our search controllers kind of refactored. So let's delete these two up here. We no longer need those. Now we just need to kind of refactor out this, this tab bar initialization. So let's do that as well down here. Slide up here. So func create tab uh, bar and then we're just going to pass in this function uh, to the root view controller of the um, the window. So there's going to ret return a UI tab bar controller. And then let's go ahead and yank this code out because this is what we're going to kind of use up here. So delete that code, bring it back down here, paste it. So we do want a tab bar to be that and then we're going to start configuring this tab bar. Um, before we throw in the view controllers, we want to configure this with the tint color. Because we want, if you saw in the design, or it's actually not on the design, but in the video, we want the tint of our tab bar to be green just to kind of go with the overall style. And if you do it here and make use the tab bar appearance, it's going to make it like app wide. So let's do UI, UI tab bar dot appearance. Again, so appearance is like overall um, appearance. We're going to do this again with like navigation controller too. Uh, dot tint color. And that's going to equal dot system green. So there you go. And now we just need to initialize this tab bar with our view controllers, except now we don't have those variables of search uh, search NC and favorites NC. So this is where we're going to call these functions that we created here. And they're going to create those. So now we're going to do uh, uh, create search navigation controller and create favorites navigation controller. And you could probably like, let's actually do this just because these long names, like I try to not do those when, when I need to. So again, create search NC. If we're going to use NC and VC, let's be consistent uh, for, for, you know, abbreviations. So create search NC, create favorites NC. And let's just, cause these are very long names, unnecessarily long. Sometimes a long name is, is fine because it's very descriptive and shortening it would make it confusing. That's not the case here. Um, so now the last thing we want is to return that uh, UI tab bar controller. So return tab bar. And then now, so here again, we have the function that creates our navigation controllers. We're using those functions to create our tab bar. And then now up here, instead of just passing in tab bar, now we can do just create tab bar and it will run all those other functions. So again, we've refactored that out of this uh, will connect a scene. Cause again, this is a very important um, 
it's it's this may be a bad analogy. It's almost like the view to load of like your whole app, right? So I like to keep this clean and not super cluttered. Um, that's why I moved all this code out of there into its own functions. So now when we run it, we should see uh, the tab bar with the icons and the titles and it should be looking good. Okay, so here's our search screen, the system pink. You can see the tab bar is there with the search and the green tint. We tap on favorites. Now that gets the green tint and blue. So there we have it. Our foundation of the navigation is all set up. And again, I know I've said this before, but I want to repeat it. It's the Russian doll uh, analogy, right? Where you have the tab bar controller that holds two navigation controllers. For example, when I click on search, I'm looking at the search navigation controller. When I click on favorites, I'm looking at the favorites navigation controller. They're two separate things. And a navigation controller is essentially, I, I look at it like a deck of cards. Like if you imagine a stack of deck of cards, but each card is a view controller. So whenever you push a new view onto the stack, view controller onto the stack, you're basically putting a new card on top of the deck of cards. And that's the one you see, whatever's on top. And then when you go back, you're, you're popping off that view controller or that, that top card of the deck of cards to reveal the view controller underneath it. That's what's happening when you're going back and you're pushing new views on. And so like a view controller can only have two view, uh, I'm sorry, a navigation controller may only have two view controllers in it, or it could have 20, right? So that's the stack. And, and that's also, if, if you understood what I just said, how you're just like popping and pushing on top of a stack, like that is like the data structure, a stack. Uh, kind of in a nutshell, but that's how navigation controllers work. So you kind of see that Russian doll analogy um, where it's just containers holding containers. So hopefully that cleared up uh, a bit. What I did say I was going to do is I was going to blow it up so you could really see it. I almost forgot to do this. The coolest part of the video, almost forgot to do it. So down here in Xcode, there's this debugger here, this view debugger, where it will pull up your app uh, while it's running, it has to be running to do this. And if you see this, it doesn't look like much, but if you grab it and spin it, like, wow, now your views are popping out. And there's this little slider down here that can like pop out the views more in the lower left. And you can hit this plus button to zoom in, zoom out. Let me get rid of this bottom part. So it's kind of, I can zoom in a little bit to show you. But here you can see in the upper left, you see you have our scene back here. You have the UI tab bar controller, which is holding the UI navigation controller. And it's this is the favorites navigation controller. And then it is uh, holding the favorites list VC. So again, Tab bar controller holds navigation controller, which holds uh, the view controllers. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can kind of see that. This view is also great for uh, debugging. You know, if, if you're building a screen and you can't figure out like what's going on with the view, oftentimes it's behind another view. So again, this debugger tool is uh, very, very useful for debugging complex UIs, but it also illustrates very nicely how these views are nested within each other. So hope that all made sense. On to the next video.